Welcome to Sermon Based Small Groups. Uh, today we are looking at Ephesians 5, 21 through 6, 4. And, um, and this text and this scripture really is quite often misunderstood and misinterpreted. And we're looking at it today for the revolutionary thing that it was. So you having read the scripture, um, now know that what Paul's saying is, is kind of confrontational in our cultural setting. But um, it's even more so in the ancient context. In the ancient context, really what would have happened was this was a revolutionary instruction given the way that Roman society worked. And this is something I didn't really include in the sermon, and I, and I feel sad that I didn't, because what went on is... Um, is in Roman circles, there was always this instruction given to the husbands, to the husbands, to the men. And, and they were always, it was so common in Roman society that men were given all the responsibility, all the authority, all the influence, and everybody else just kind of followed. So um, half the population who wasn't male had no voice. And um, the other group of the population that really wasn't a mature man and um, so I would say kind of in that honey hole of age between 18 to probably 50 was um, anybody before 18 and after 50 was not as influential, even if they were male. And, um, and men had this kind of throat hold on culture. And what Paul says in this Ephesians passage is absolutely radical. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to your husbands and, and follow them. That would not have been a new thing. That would have been very common. But then he goes on to say, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And really what we see in that is the calling towards husbands is now the, the stakes are raised because when we look at what Jesus did, uh, we have to take what Paul said and ask the question, well, how did Jesus love the church? Who was the first church? Well, it would have been the disciples. And before the night that Christ was betrayed, how did Jesus love the church? What did he do? He washed the feet of the disciples, even the one who would betray him. He served at great cost. And we see that in John chapter 13, where Jesus is really kind of saying, look, I did this for you as an example. Now go and live that way. The calling to the church is very clear. It's a clarion call for us. We have to understand we are called to serve one another. We are not called to set up hierarchies based on gender and gender ethics, but we are called to serve as husbands the way Christ served the church. So you may say, you know, my wife has to submit. Yes, Biblically, that's true. But husbands, you are called to serve and promote her. You are called to hold your wife up and support and care for her the way Christ did the church, even to the point of giving your own life to the cause, which is a painful but very honest look at the scriptures. So for us, we recognize that God is doing something in this and Jesus modeled what Paul taught. Jesus modeled it in John 13, and Jesus also spoke of it in Luke chapter 20 or chapter 22. Uh, Jesus says this: There was a dispute that uh, arose among the disciples, which one was considered to be the greatest. And Jesus said to them, "Gentile kings lord over them their authority, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. Bene, good. So these good deeds they're giving down to the masses, but." You are not to be like them. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest. Remember, youth and young in this culture is not valuable. It's pretty worthless. And Jesus is saying, be, well, Jesus said, be like little children. You know, if you want to come to me, come to me like these children do. And, um, and Jesus in this uh, text says, be, if the greatest among you should be like the youngest. And the one who rules should be like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who is serving the table? Is it not the one who is at the table who is greater? Then Jesus finishes with this. But I am among you as one who serves. Jesus Christ is saying, I'm at the table, but I also serve. 
And Jesus set the ethic. And Paul calls us to order our families and our lives in submission, first of all, to Christ and then to the family system that God set up. But it, God inverts it. Yes, husbands are heads of the home and wives are called to submit. But husbands, so you have this top-down structure, God inverts this. Husbands are to serve up. You are to serve everybody in your family. So the question is, are you willing to serve? Are you willing, wives, to submit to your husbands? Husbands, to serve and love your wives as Christ does the church. And fathers, don't exasperate your children. Don't be an arrogant overlord who only exercise authority. Learn to listen to your children. Apologize. Be honest. Be humble. And be transparent so that they can see in you the fruits of the Holy Spirit. This is not an easy teaching, but it is the Bible. We don't apologize for what Scripture says. But now I'm inviting you to lean in and wrestle with the questions we have this week on this teaching. Grace and peace as you do so. So for questions today, I'm not going to ask them. I would like this discussion to be a little bit more organic. You have questions, uh, facilitators, you have them. And I would like you to walk through, walk your group through these questions and really wrestle with them at a pace in your group that's comfortable and not have to come back to the video today. Take time, be honest, be transparent, and be willing to tell each other. Wives, if you're sitting there and say, it's hard for me to do this, it's okay to say that because you can be accountable in your group. Husbands, if you're like, whoa, I never saw it this way, It's good for us to talk about this and not be afraid of what the Word of God is saying and what the Word of God is calling us to. Friends, wrestle deeply with these questions as your facilitators walk you through them. Engage and deal with the discomfort you may be feeling inside yourself as this conversation goes on. Enjoy the conversation. Grace and peace.